does this mean, do you think, then, for emerging markets? Yeah, this is uh, this is actually quite a difficult one right now because we, we often think of emerging markets as an individual block, and you, you simply can't do that anymore. So one of the things that we've looked at for Asia in particular uh, is that North Asia, South Asia story has actually been quite clear that there's a sort of two-speed Asia at this particular point with the exporters of the North and, say, Singapore, uh, on a different uh, trajectory to those markets in South Asia, India, of course, the classic case, but others as well, such as Indonesia, to some extent, Thailand, uh, facing headwinds that simply were not there maybe three or six months ago and are certainly not there relative to North Asia. So we're actually now looking again at relative plays within emerging markets. Given this uncertain environment on the US and what the Fed will do. We're trying to avoid playing too much of the dollar side here. What we'd rather do is play one emerging market against the other and look at relative plays. North Asia versus South Asia right now looks quite a clear relative play within Asia. Um, you could make the argument as well across other emerging markets that you have these relative plays within markets as well. South Africa looks good relative to Turkey, for example. Uh, we think that Singapore looks good relative to uh, Thailand, these types of relative plays. So emerging markets here are going to be very much driven by different uh, engines and are going to be moving at very different speeds over the next few quarters. So for us on emerging markets, the trick is now, again, to work out winners and losers. There's really not going to be an emerging market trade as such. There are going to be intra-emerging market trades where you're picking out winners and losers across the asset markets, but also across, across individual countries.